I'm here with Jeremy of Inhuman Condition. Yes. To talk about the band, the men, the legend, the tour that they're currently on right now across North America with Vader and Origin. Yes. How's things going, man? It's been a, it's been a while since we talked. It has a, been a while. A lot has happened since. Yeah. Uh, eventful, to say the least. <laughs> uh, the tour is going great. I uh, just got to say right out of the rip. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be out here with Vader and Origin. Those guys are just fantastic at their crafts, both of them separately together. Uh, yeah, they're just a great band. And then, like, it's really, it's really incredible because you'd think that, like, 40 years of death metal wouldn't be possible but then here we are and vader is literally just starting from their demos up to contemporary releases and they're just kind of going through and peter's up there uh peter's the singer for vader is giving little stories and quips about wherever they were at in whatever time period was happening and it's pretty it's pretty incredible like i mean because that band came from poland which i mean that's 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 awesome because it, that's such like a a small part of like uh, such a small part of the world that they have reached everywhere the entire world. I mean, they've been around for forty years. That's forty incredible. years, and we're talking uh, Japan and Australia, and they played everywhere. South America, and it's just pretty cool to be able to see that metal has still kept up with where it's at so. yeah, yeah the show today is like a little bit of a history lesson on the band it feels like yep. that way but with music yep. being told through music which which i think it's a great way to put a tour together to celebrate four years yeah uh are you taking some notes for when you celebrate four years of inhuman condition uh, no way man how old am i gonna be i'll be like old really wow. old no no one wants to hear i'll be like <laughs> shitting my pants in a diaper and everyone would be like oh wow great i thought you were there him already. again yeah exactly <laughs> i'm already doing it so you just don't know about it the camera's up high you can't <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we're, we're we're not we're not dealing with that right now but let me ask you this you you got yeah. a, a new drummer uh yes. filling in for you guys on this tour yeah the dude kicked ass by the way yes. holy shit man yeah. he was amazing he's a basher yeah he uh his name is colton and uh He's great, man. He's just uh, straightforward. It's uh, me. It's really we always just say that this band is like caveman death metal drumming. It's all just like a big hat tip to Bill Andrews. That guy had a straightforward style, and you set him down, and he just went. And there wasn't a whole bunch of like none of that shit. It was kind of like one symbol. Another symbol. That was it. You know, just there wasn't there. It wasn't all this like splashy madness. It was just kind of like let the music breathe and let it happen. And it was just all the while just bashing. But I'm just talking wherever. I'll talk in yours. I'll talk in mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw you guys also had some new songs from the EP. Yeah, that's a that's a lot of fun. We did a, a Godzilla cover, which uh, I don't know. I was at the gym and I was smoking weed, and I came home and I told my brother Taylor, I'm like. Dude, it'd be totally awesome if we played Godzilla. He was like, yeah, cool. By the end of the night, he had already demoed it out, and the next day I tracked the drums for it. So it was yeah, literally th that th quick. These guys really work in, uh, in I was going to say strange ways, but not. Like, you guys just have a really cool methodology when it comes to making mm -hmm. music. Yep. We talked about this when you when we talked about your latest EP. Yep. Uh, how's, how's those new tracks been for you live? Because the last time, obviously, that you were in Toronto mm. uh, with a band, you didn't have those songs. So now you have a little bit of a, a longer repertoire, if you will, and new tracks yep. that, obviously, you, yep. you want to showcase them to, to the fans. Oh, it's been great, you know. Uh, the responses to the everything has been awesome. And then, of course, who doesn't know the lyrics or at least the chorus for Godzilla. I mean, it's, it's been ingrained in all of our memories like forever, thanks to Blue Oyster Cult and, you know, all the all the Godzilla movies. But uh, it's been great. It's been a really, really great warm response and uh, people seem to really love it. And they also really seem to love like the live tracks. Like I have some, some people who, uh, fans of ours that hit us up and are like, wow, these live songs are amazing that you put at the end of the EP. Thank you so much for that. You know, because normally EPs, you know, may, might not contain that many songs. We put eight songs on the EP just because we were like, why not? And we do all of our own stunts. I don't, you may or may not know that about us. Uh, my brother and I own our own record label. We release our own stuff. We record all of our own stuff. And uh, we do whatever the fuck it is that we want to do. So breaking molds, just really just doing whatever. It was like, hey, do you, I'll say like, hey, do you want to do this? And he goes, yeah. Or, you know, 
every every now and again, if it's like we have too much on our plate, he'll say no or I'll say no. But for the most part, we live kind of like a, a fuck yes life to where it's like, hey, you want to do that? It's like, yeah, fuck yeah, let's do it. Yeah, why not? Why not? What a great uh, energy to have. Uh, is it difficult to, to be a drummer in your band live, considering that you're the drummer in your band? No, because I'm not too much of like a... Uh, I don't ride too much on the drummer. I mean, I, I don't. I'm not like you blew a, a bar 36. You didn't hit no nothing like that. It, it can't be like life. Can't be like that. I'm not even a drummer like that on my own. I mean, I do the best that I can. I'm just a human, and uh, the way that I the way that I write and I approach music is I don't typically write beforehand. I used to when I was younger with the early absence records, I would like have my parts and I really really rehearsed them. And then I realized that I think well, I'm tell I told myself that spontaneity is the best way to write. I don't go into anything with like a preconceived notion. I I know metal and I know breaks and I know what's supposed to happen and I know what feels good to me. So I just lead with that. So I'll jump into the recording session not knowing anything. I'll hear something. I might like work on it for like a second, go through it once, twice, and go, okay, yeah, let's do it again. And then, bam, just build from there. And then whatever comes, I know that I played something, let's say on a, a previous, like verse one. Let's say I get to verse two. I remember what I did. And then I mix it up. I motif things from verse one or I motif things from chorus one into chorus two and then it grows and then I add and I build and I build and then that creates something in my opinion special because it's just my mind working however it works so like if you listen to like my kick patterns they're not exactly the same every single time so for me to like expect a drummer to like nail every single little thing is like kind of difficult because I just made that shit up on the fly, you know. So to help like further like make it like make sense, uh, my brother and I, Taylor and I, we, I still jam all the songs on drums. We, him and I jam, I, I'll play drums, he plays guitar. So I keep up on it that way. So if a drummer does ask like, hey, what's happening? What goes on here? I can be like, oh, well, that's easy. That's a this, you know, I, I did this here. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a little room for error, I mean, on everybody's part, I mean. R room for error is something that I was actually concerned today because not only you jumped on the drum kit a couple of times, you were also walking on that plank there. Yeah. On the side of the, the last person I saw doing that, they did a face plant onto the crowd and it wasn't pretty. Well, I mean, it was pretty for me, like it was yeah. kind of funny. Yeah, I'm not I mean, gonna lie, it was kind of funny. Poor guy but, or girl. Uh, but yeah. it was a girl, like, yeah, she wasn't, her smile wasn't the same after the show as it was before. Oh, no. So I was a little bit concerned for you, you Thank know what you. I mean? So, uh, but you yes. pulled it off, you pulled it off. Thanks, uh, I have the balances of a cat. In the lives, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm <laughs> hoping. No, so I used to skateboard, so I got a little bit of balance. I'm, you know, I do the best I can. But uh, yeah, I don't know. The music just pulls me wherever. I don't have any like banter that I have rehearsed that I'm like, I gotta say this or this has to happen. Anytime I try and do that, I fuck that up and I don't even do it. So you don't have that whole thing that every time you walk into a town, like you, you have that same speech that you give, like no. you know, no. And then you fuck up the name of the town, so that doesn't happen. Well, I mean, I might. I might. Tomorrow I might call Detroit, uh, you know, uh, Buffalo, Grand Blank, <laughs> uh, Buffalo. I was gonna say uh, Buffalo or Buffalo. That'd be also. I, I'm gonna call him Buffalo tomorrow. <laughs> I'm coming for you, Buffalo, Detroit. Okay. It, 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 you, you have such great energy. I told you that last time I saw you. you. Like you, you have just incredible energy. Not the kind of energy I expect from a drummer. So that always surprises me because you don't act like a drummer on stage. Like you, you, yeah. you're very comfortable as a frontman. Yeah. Uh, d did you ever thought about maybe putting the drum kit aside and just concentrating 100% on on being the frontman? Mm, nah. No. You enjoy I'll, drumming too much. I'll always play drums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I put. I mean. How old am I? I put a lot of 20, years. I put 20. a lot of. Yeah, I put at least twenty years, all my whole life. Like Since he was born. Zero to, <laughs> to twenty, which is now. No, I put a very long time into drumming, and I love. I love drumming. It's. Uh, it's more than a passion. It's. It's a lifestyle. I could say. So that's why I said, like, I mean, I keep up. I play all of these songs on drums also because, you know, it's actually kind of gutting because. If you if you may or may not know the story of this band, I was supposed to be the drummer for this whole project. It was never meant to be that I was going to be the singer, and my brother forced me to be the singer. So it's it really is his fault, and that's okay. But I'm saddened because these drums are like caveman, dumb, and just like it's like everything I love about drumming, and I don't get to play them at all. <laughs> I don't get to play them live. But we were.
talking like maybe on a headline tour, maybe I'll like jump back and play drums on a song. Why not? Yeah, and I think they, that would be kind of cool. My brother can sing. He could sing all this stuff. And he'd be able to handle it. So, I mean, that'd be cool. And everybody'd be like, wow, look what they... Look what they did. Did you see that that singer do jump back and play the drums? And I'll be like, yeah, I did because I did it. So, Yeah, I think that would be really cool. It would be yeah, something be cool. like a little nice caveat to throw to the fence. Yeah. And since we're on the topic of drums, I mean, I have to bring this up. Shoot. Uh, I, I have to bring this up. You know, uh, I'm sure a lot of the folks watching this know that you've been called a troll. Uh -huh, uh, yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, how was that whole well, situation? I think I got to take a picture like this. Didn't they do this with their tour laminates? For like the first few years, uh, I think they did something yeah. like that. Yeah, so you're you're on you're yeah. on uh, you're on point with that. You're on point. Well, uh, I'm not a troll. I was just uh, just popping my head in and saying hello to the rest of the world. I guess I wanted to give myself a an entryway into uh, trying out, and uh, I got that. So cool. Wish me luck. Do, do, do you so do, on your end? Do you have serious aspirations, or you're doing it more like, hey, you know what? It doesn't hurt. No harm, no foul. Well, I mean, it is no harm, no foul. And literally, when, when Jay was uh, kicked off the boat, every drummer was like, yo. <laughs> every drummer that I know. And I know, you could imagine that I know a lot, but everyone was like, yo. Like, how? Hey. <laughs> you know, so, you know, it's like tough competition, so. Anyways, it just, that was something that kind of like got a little bit away, and like we all have Tank the Tech to thank for that. So, follow that guy's podcast. He does uh, he does some funny stuff and some good work. So, oh, oh, in your view as a drummer, what does the drummer for that job uh, requires? Uh, Eloy from uh, Sepultura. You think that's you think that's going to be the the guy? I don't know. My money's on him, by the way. My money's on him. Uh, he's uh, well, in my opinion, he's the he's the right man for many jobs, but he would be the right man for that job. He's incredible. He's he's got spirit. He's got heart. He's got the chops. You know, he would be great at it. I think a lot of people agree with that too. You know, he's he's one of my favorite metal drummers. Him or Ray Luzier, I think him from Corn, but I think he's pretty happy with Corn. So. Yeah, and and he's not going to be uh, doing that much work with Sepultura in the future, in the coming nope. years. So there's yep. there's always there's always that. There's always uh, that. I, I have to ask you this as well. You you left Venom Inc. Yep. Uh, around everything kind of happened around the same time, and that's kind yep. of one thing kind of led into the other. I feel like there yep. was a lot of uh, there was a Venn diagram where those where those things kind of all met in the middle. Uh, yep. Can you share uh, your your thoughts on 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 leaving that band, leaving that project that you were a part of? Uh, is it to concentrate more on what you're doing currently with Inhuman Condition or no. all the other stuff that you're doing? No, it, it, would, it didn't have to do with that. It was actually like a, it was a cumulative of things. And I knew about a year before that that I was already going to be taking a leave of absence. So uh, let's just say, uh, you know, we didn't agree on everything. And uh, best of luck. You agreed to disagree. We agreed to disagree. <laughs> It wasn't creative differences either, but you know. I, I love that one. That's a great one. That's well, a good one. That's a. It's like oh, it's creative differences. It's yeah, like, that, that's oh, the one that I mean, everybody always goes with. Yeah, everybody always goes with. But I mean, in, in a world of like we have to be PC and say things. I mean, it just simply didn't work out. You know, uh, here's another cliche that we can be said is no good marriage ends in divorce. Wow, I never heard that one before. Yeah, why well, use that on my uh, second wife? I said that. <clears throat> All right. Good. I'll, I'll, it's not copyrighted, so no, I, I, well, might, I, mean, I might borrow that one at some point. Go for it. It's yours. Uh, I'll it. borrow that one at some point. Uh, th this tour is going to be running for a while. You're going to be yep. busy on the road playing these shows. But uh, what's uh, what's on your schedule once you get back home, and, and what's on your schedule for the rest of, of 2024? Um, we got some studio stuff uh, coming up at our, our personal studio, my brother and I's studio at home. We have some mixing uh, for two different projects. And then uh, Deicide is doing a Decibel Fest, and then they're doing Milwaukee Metal Fest. And uh, then I think we do Europe in August. And then there's a couple potential uh, Inhuman Condition things for maybe later in the year, but we'll see. But other than that, it's a pretty light workload in comparison to previous years. Uh, last year I toured seven months. The year before that I toured seven months. So it's a little bit less than that, which is, that's cool. It's nice to be home and, you know, play with the dog. And, make music maybe who knows we might end up with a new inhuman condition record just because we're home so 
Well, and the way you guys work, I mean, all it yeah. takes is you watching a movie, having an idea, calling your yep. brother, next thing you know, you got three tracks. That's it. At it, the very least. It really is. That's really all it takes. I mean, it doesn't take much more than that. Like, uh, so we have a new Absence record coming out uh, March 27th, 29th, 26th. I don't know. Around that time. Somewhere around that week. Uh, so that band was shelved. We were good. Like, we had, like, put it to bed cap on it and put it up here and left it and then I don't know what happened he got a hair up his ass and was like hey I wrote a new absence song last night I was like what he goes yeah and then two hours later yeah I just wrote another one three hours later I just wrote another one and then within a day and a half he wrote the entire eight songs that are on the record and I'm like oh my god and I listened to it and I'm like this is some of my favorite stuff, which got me like mega pumped. And I'm like, all right, well, let's do it. Right. So, uh, boom, within like two weeks, I had already tracked the drums for the full record. He did. we had all the guitars tracked and we did all the bass. And then we like sent it over to our singer and was like, we got a new album. You know, it how, really... was the, how was the response? Because like you said, everything was shelf. Like, yeah, it was a done deal. Oh, so... he was he was stoked. I mean, because the uh, our opinion is that the material is great so it was like it all felt good it all again spontaneity comes into play whenever it comes to anything that my brother and I do it's 100% just happening and just uh, it's expressive and everybody says that like music is expressive and in in our case it really is it's it's really what we do and if we feel it we feel it and we put everything behind it 100% and we even put our money behind it we put our everything behind it like uh, again we own our own label so we're we're the only ones responsible, which is amazing. There's n literally, uh, there's no drawbacks to it. There's none. There's no drawback. It's just, if we believe in it, we get behind it, so. Well, Jeremy, on that note, thank you very much for your time, and it's been a pleasure chatting with you in person. Thank you for having uh, me. We see each other all the time, but we yep. never got to, to do this... Uh, person to person. Uh, person yeah. to person. We've done it on Zoom, but that kind of sucks. Digitally. Uh, yeah, so this is much better. I, I hope to see you back again soon. Analog. No, 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 orifice. Yeah. Oh, orifice. Yeah. Well, Anna. And Le, Anna Le Orifice. That's, that's what it was. <laughs> that's a story for another day. Yeah, that's a story for I'm a different... I'm not going to tell you. That, that's for a different video and for a different platform. That's more like on the Pornhub kind of thing. But that's... We'll just leave that one hanging in there. Let's do oh, it. Oh, that was not a good one either. Hanging no, in there was no, a good one. Anyways, good. guys, go check these guys on the road. They're opening for Vader and Origin on this incredible four years of Vader tour. So don't miss it. Uh, and, and buy this guy a drink or, or something because he's going to give you 120%. That's another yes. cliche. But he's going to give you 120%. He really puts an effort in it. And I really like the drummer that you guys brought on this tour. Thanks. Outstanding. Yeah, he does a, he does a good job. And well, the best part is he's 20 and he is just happy to be where he's at and he's loving it so that's awesome because that comes through he's not i don't know you can get some musicians that are like let's just say 30s jaded and they're like everything's a bother this is his first time in canada so that motherfucker's eating like poutine for breakfast lunch and dinner for the past three days and shitting like an ox you know and, so. there's no shitting on the bus did you tell him that no he's been uh, he's been shitting everywhere the oh, streets okay. the fucking you know wherever you know <laughs> just not on the bus never that's, on that's the bus rule, that's rule never number one on the bus there's no shitting on the bus rule number one unless you hot bag it which that's kind of embarrassing but we have to sometimes. Yeah, sometimes, you know, a man's got to do what a man's got to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally, you know, sometimes shit hits the yep. fan. Yes, it, it is does. what it is. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to put the tour dates on the description of the video, so go check these guys out. And See I, ya. I think we should cheers our mics. Yeah. That's it.